Hello there my RPG lovers and welcome to another video. Designing a proper action combat system in role playing games is not an easy task to say the least. Striking a perfect balance between player reaction and visual feedback is quite challenging, especially when you need to keep in mind all the RPG features on top of that. We talk a lot about RPG mechanics on this channel and I love to compare different design approaches and creative differences between developers. In this video we're going to talk about a particular RPG series that always had an amazing action combat system. Well, almost always. Let's get one thing straight, I'm not a huge fan of anything related to anime, don't shoot me please. Even though this series is leaning on that side quite a bit, I still enjoy the experience it offers. Actually, that's an understatement, I absolutely love this series. These games deserve a lot more attention from RPG fans, especially if you like great combat systems and amazing boss fights. Somehow these games always went under the radar, at least for western audience. So what makes the combat in these games so good? DL Compare is the site for comparing video game prices from different retailers. It's a great tool if you want to make sure you'll get the best deal possible. Just search for the game you want to buy and DL Compare will show you where you can get the lowest price. The link for this website is in the description. The first Ys game came out in 1987 for home computers, NES and Sega Master System. At the time, most RPGs had turn-based combat, but the first Ys game went in a different direction. The combat in this game was described as bump combat, you will automatically attack enemies by just walking into them. The damage you deal and take depends on the angle you're bumping into your enemies. It sounds really simple, because it is, but Falcom, the developer of this game, was really creative when it comes to designing different enemy encounters. You really had to keep in mind the direction of your movement, especially in boss fights. If you like RPGs with action combat, you should know that Falcom laid the foundation for the action RPG genre. Dragon Slayer series, which is basically the predecessor of these games, had some revolutionary features that we take for granted in modern action RPGs. Besides real-time action-oriented combat, Dragon Slayer series introduced full-fledged character statistics, karma slash reputation system, individual experience for equipped items and equipment that changes the player character visible appearance. Just to name a few, when you learn all of this, it's not that surprising why newer Ys games have such an amazing combat. After all, Falcom is the granddad of this beloved RPG subgenre. I really want to start talking about Ys 8, because I dare to say that the combat in this game is brought near to perfection. But before that, I have to mention a couple of games in the Ys series that basically laid the foundation for Ys 8 combat. When Ys 5 came out in 1995, it almost destroyed this series. It's probably the worst Ys game that ever released, and the fans of this series had to wait 8 years for the next game. It definitely paid off because Ys 6 was a great game. It had a fast-paced action combat system that was based around 3 different types of damage that you could do. E7 had a similar philosophy when it comes to this, but instead of switching your weapons when you need a different damage type, you switch your party members. E7 introduced some major changes to this series. Besides the main protagonist, Adol Christian, you get two more characters in your party. You can easily switch between them with the press of a button and you need to do this in fights in order to maximize your damage output. It always depends on the enemies you're fighting. The controls are very responsive, which is one of the reasons for such a fluid combat. Boss fights are really fun, with a nice amount of challenge. I played E7 a lot by emulating the PSP version on my PC until it got released on Steam in 2017. But I recently bought a PSP and one of the reasons for that was to play E games on the original hardware. If you're interested in playing E7 or some older titles in this series, I recommend getting them on Steam because the ports are really well done. Those were just some of the features of this amazing game and there were a couple of more games in the series before E8 came out. Memories of Celseta looks and plays very similar to E7, so I won't waste a lot of time talking about this game. Although it is considered to be one of the weaker games in the series, but I don't agree with that. When I started writing the script for this video, the original plan was to talk about Ys 8 combat only. But for some reason, that didn't feel right because there is a lot of history behind this game series. 
Anyway, East 8 came out in 2016 for PS Vita, in 2017 for PS4 and in 2018 for PC and Switch. All of this footage is captured on PC with high quality texture pack installed which I highly recommend if you plan to get this game on Steam. It's just a free DLC that you can install. Since this video is focused primarily on combat, I'll talk about that first, but I will also mention other aspects of the game as well after that. The combat in Ease 8 can be described as fast-paced hack and slash action. It might look a bit floaty because of the movement, but that's definitely not the case. Every attack has a nice amount of weight behind it, especially the skills. What I really like about the combat in general is the fact that you don't need to rely that much on the lock-on system if you don't prefer playing like that. If you watched a couple of my videos about RPG mechanics, you know I'm not a huge fan of target locking in RPGs. This doesn't mean that locking on in E8 is bad, it's actually quite useful because it will show you what damage type you should use against that particular enemy. It's a little bit harder to use ranged attacks without locking on, but it's not impossible. The majority of people don't have problems with target locking in RPGs, and I know I'm probably in the minority, but hey, that's my perspective. Since I mentioned damage types, let's talk about that. As you play the game, you will meet interesting characters that will join your party, and each of them have unique skills and playstyles. Each character in your party will either do slash, strike or pierce damage. The whole combat system is based around using the appropriate damage type against your enemies. Like I said before, you can see what type of damage you should use on the enemy by just locking on, but this is not the only way to figure it out. Slashing damage is for regular enemies, striking damage works the best on enemies with some kind of protection, and piercing damage is deadly against all flying opponents. Before you engage in a fight, the characters in your party will also give you hints about this. This only means that you'll do reduced damage to enemies if you didn't choose the best type of damage for the fight. Switching characters in your party is really seamless and it works by pressing one button. In order to keep the flow of action going, your position and camera won't jump around when you switch characters. Instead, the character you're controlling will just switch positions with the character you switch. The gameplay can be really fast, especially when you get comfortable with controls, but it's never chaotic and you can always see what's going on on the screen. This is largely because enemy attacks are well telegraphed and animated, so when you get hit, it never feels unfair, it's your fault. When you use regular attacks and skills, you can't cancel the animations by dodging or by some similar actions. This is usually a problem in other action RPGs, but not in this game. Mostly because the combat is on the fast side and if you could cancel those animations, you could probably evade everything with ease. With ease, get it? <laughs> yeah, never mind. So if you time your skills and attacks poorly, you should get hit. But you can still use the block button in all situations, so even if you don't time your skills correctly, you still have the chance to block. This works like a parry mechanic because you'll need to time it properly and when you do, you will trigger a skill called Flash Guard. You gain temporary invincibility and all your attacks will be critical hits for a short time. It will also fill up your extra gauge, which you'll need for executing special moves. SP bar is the resource for using regular skills and it fills up pretty fast, especially if you take advantage of timing your attacks properly. Besides the flash guard mechanic, there's also flash move. A very similar mechanic, but it works by dodging at the right time to evade enemy attacks. You gain temporary invincibility and increase mobility when you successfully perform this move. Your characters will learn new skills while you progress through the game, but you only have 4 skill slots in combat. It's actually more than enough when you take in consideration that all three of your selected characters will have four skills to use. Along with the extra skill which is really powerful, but you'll need to fill up your special gauge by successfully landing skills in order to use it. That should be all the major things that you should know about this combat system, but what about the game itself? Well, it's pretty fucking good. The main protagonist Adol Christian and his best buddy Dogi are well known to every fan of this series. Do you know the name Adol Kristin? Ah, Adol Kristin. You start the game on a ship where you meet a bunch of different people, but soon after that the ship gets destroyed by some sea monster and you end up on the unknown island. The main goal is pretty simple, find a way to get off this island. This island is huge, which is not apparent right from the start. Locations are wonderful to look at and there is a nice variety of terrain. You will start building your outpost on the island and the main goal is to explore every area and find more passengers from the ship. 
the exploration is not linear, for the lack of a better word. The island is fairly open from the beginning of the game, but you'll find some obstacles which prevents you from accessing certain areas on the island. These obstacles usually require more people in your team, or some specific item that you'll have to find, like special gloves for climbing branches for example. So you'll have to go back and forth quite a bit, but since you can easily teleport from healing shrines, that's not a big problem. You'll have a quest board in your outpost, and you can come back to see if someone has a special task for you. After a couple of hours, you will unlock raids, which is basically a survivor mode. Bunch of monsters are attacking your village at once, and you'll have to defend it. The game keeps throwing content at you at a steady pace, which is great. Now let's talk about the things that ain't so great. Like I said in the beginning, I'm not a huge fan of anime or JRPGs in general. And even though I love this game, some design decisions can be frustrating. Like invisible walls, respawning enemies as soon as you re-enter the zone, items that are not changing your visible appearance and some more minor things. You also have to do some grinding, which is not a huge issue, especially because the combat is so great. This is nothing new to ease games, because some older titles required crazy amounts of grinding in order to progress. The itemization is not bad, but it's not great either. Enhancing your weapons by collecting materials on the island feels good, but it's really simplistic. But you're definitely going to get in situations where you need to upgrade your gear or get more levels. I would say that the general sense of progression is decent. And I really have to mention the amazing soundtrack, something that E series is known for. No matter the situation you're in, there is a great soundtrack playing in the background. And I think I'll stop here. I really didn't want to turn this video into a review, but I hope this was enough to get you interested in Ease 8 or in Ease games in general. Tell me your thoughts about this series and did you even hear about it? Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like the video if you want to help me reach a wider audience. Subscribe for more content and click on the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads. Before I go I have to give a shout out to Above Up. This guy made some amazing ease videos, so if you get invested in this series, you should definitely check him out. Special thanks to my Patreons and YouTube exclusive members, and if you as well want to become one of them, all the links are in the description. That will be all, and I'll see you in the next one.